Yes, and that soundtrack will be coming to La Liga stadiums near you. Oscar, how did Girona do it? Why did you depress me like this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard the noise. I'm like, wait a minute. And I just remembered. Girona are back. Let's say, let's congratulate them. It was a great achievement to finally not fail at the playoffs. Yeah, so, yeah. third time lucky for them. Similar to Maria. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the two seasonal bottlers of La Liga's um, Smart Bank aren't there anymore. They're in the big, they're in the big leagues now. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, they are. And with Girona, they had, they had a quite tricky run to the to, to get promoted in La Liga, they first of all played against Avar, Ford Avar, who they were minutes, seconds away from being promoted on the final day of La Liga Smart Bank. And they found themselves eliminated, eliminated against Girona. Yeah, that's that's typical Segunda luck for you, man. Like Avar were in control of this thing along with Almeria, but then, you know, to lose automatic promotion in the last minute and then to now not beat Juruna who you were ran, you are obviously stronger than is a bit of a disappointment and it just shows like with the Segunda it doesn't matter if you are a very good team that just dropped from the first division once you're stuck there it gets harder and harder to come out yeah yeah it does but Zerona, they went from strength to strength. And going into the final, I think Dr. Tenerife were the better team because I saw the four games against Los Angeles and they were, mm-hmm. they weren't spectacular, but they were defensively solid and they looked like a team who we complained about in La Liga before. Like all those yeah. teams that they use a certain, that we classified them as a certain T word, which might get us in trouble. But yeah, so that's not safe. <laughs> Uh, and that's why out of all the teams Las Palmas they played the most exciting football and like when they came up last time they were just a breath of fresh air and I feel like the league needs that it, like the, it's not that the league is bad but like the league needs to get the league can get even better and a breath of fresh air like Las Palmas would have been nice but you know yeah, they have the, pro- the problem with those teams Catalan though. club yeah, yeah. The problem with those teams, though, and I feel the reason why that sort of Las Palmas, Stike Setien, style of play went out of fashion in La Liga is they're very naive. Mm -hmm. And you saw that in both games against Tenerife in that they weren't able to break Tenerife down. They kept on getting frustrated and they suffered tremendously in the first half. Yeah. Exactly. I noticed particularly in the first leg that Las Palmas, they didn't use the wings whatsoever. And if you're not going wide against a team like Tenerife, who is happy to just sit back, then you're not going to get much joy through the center. So yeah, it was tactical naivety on Las Palmas' end. And, and going into the final, first game was forgettable. I think mm-hmm. Tenerife got what they wanted as users. But in the second game, it looked like we we're going to see the same pattern. Tenerife was playing for a 0 0 draw up until close to the end of the first half. Yeah. What was that Tenerife yeah. defender thinking? Yeah. That was and Stan is called the penalty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But the handball was so, it's almost like they paid him or something. <laughs> yeah. That, that was just hilarious to watch, honestly. Yeah. yeah. And Adriana. Yeah, we're able to now go forward and build on that horrible mistake in the second half and rightly deserve to win the final. Shut themselves in the foot. And you know what? I don't really like Girona. They're the team that I didn't, I'm not going to say, like, oh, I like all the teams in Spain. No, I don't like Girona. They're a team that I didn't want to come through. But what I, the league needs more Gironas than Tenerife. So, in some ways, that'll be the consolation of the yeah. Also, I, like everyone that knows me knows I hate Girona more than Real Madrid and Espanol combined. <laughs> I almost don't acknowledge their existence, but then one night as I was cooking, I just it something just hit me. 
the last time Barcelona won the league. In fact, the last two times Girona were a first division team. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't won the league. So if you're like me and you can put two and two together, I said maybe Girona coming back won't be so bad if we can win the league. Like maybe it's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a sign and for poor old athletic fans or Real Madrid fans, Jerome and oh, they get God. points against yeah. both of them when they were in mm-hmm. La Liga. And athletic fans were, were possibly delighted that they got rid of Levante, but their their other bogey team has come up now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think they've only taken a point from Barcelona since yeah, they, they've been in La Liga. And that was because they had the red card in that game. Yeah, I remember that. And, and I think that was one of those games when Messi was in the, at his peak just hitting free kicks yeah. right, left, and center. 18-19 Messi was just a different breed, man. Yeah, speaking of Messi, today's his birthday. Oh. Yeah, happy birthday to the best player in the world after Enesunel. <laughs> the excellent <laughs> league player. I, yeah. I, let's let's see the moment. There's a lot of league birthdays, actually. Yeah, who else? Alba, Raquel May, oh, true. Yeah. Out. yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah, forget Messi and Google. So happy so birthday to all of them. Yeah. True. But let's talk about the little Argentine Argentine for a moment. It's like um obviously he's no longer playing in Spain, but what do you think is his best moments in his career while he was playing at Barcelona? God, uh... I'll say the best moment. Yeah, this this is too difficult. I'll say <laughs> maybe, maybe I, I don't. What do I think? Uh, okay, I'll say. Let me. Can I give my personal best moment? Yeah, yeah, personal best. Moment. Let me give my personal best moment first. When he scored that hat trick against Sevilla and broke Zara's record. For 253 league goals scored, that was a really nice day. Because I was yeah. like in boarding school and a teacher, I was tight with like, help, let me watch the game on his device. And I was so happy because <laughs> the guy was on a goal scoring drought for like eight games or something. And to see him finally break the record was pleasing to see. And then all the celebrations after. As for his best moment, I'd say. I'd say maybe win, playing in his first Champions League final and winning because he always said he was very upset he didn't make it back in time for the 2006 final because up until his injury, he was part of the first team. So, yeah, to see him, for him to win the first Champions League, I think that was probably his best moment. Yeah. Uh, I'll say for me, it's that one against five. That's possibly my best moments with watching Leo Messi. But let's transition back to La Liga. Girona, Almeria, and Valladolid are up. Which one do you think has the best chance? Like, as as their squad is right now, who do you think has the best chance to stay up? I'll say Almeria, because their squad is pretty good now, and I and they've made, like, some key loan deals permanent, like Pozo and such. And you'd expect that they'd add more. I actually saw something today where their C- director of football or something was saying that they are aiming for the Europa League. I'm like, wow, that's a big statement. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's a long-term plan. And the thing is, with Darwin Nunez, who went to Liverpool, mm-hmm. um, Maria gets, I believe, 20% of the capital gains from that transfer. Mm-hmm. So they also have some money from that. They also have some money because they... They got promoted some money because their owner is somewhat loaded, but with La Liga's like capital rules, yeah. it, it might be restricted somewhat. Yeah. And their like, first yeah, game is against Real Madrid. Yeah, their first game is at home to Real Madrid. That would be feisty. I think I think they could be Real Madrid. I'm be surprised if they do. Yeah, it's possible, but we'll see, we'll see how everyone looks. Real Madrid have also been recruiting well. So it's, I mean, it's hard to improve a squad that won the Champions League and the league, but they've recruited well so far. Yeah, and speaking of La Liga in general, this fixtures list got released last or yesterday. Which one are you looking forward to the most in the month of August? Come again. 
which fixture are you looking for the most in the month of August? Out of the fixtures okay. that have been released. Uh, let me let me take a quick look then. Uh, I'm good at them right now, and I feel like I feel one of the eye-catching ones is Atleti versus Villarreal on match day two. Like, will Emery finally beat Simeone, or will Simeone frustrate Emery again? So that one looks that one immediately jumps at us. One of the big ones so far. Another one is probably. Uh, let me look at match day one. I think this was here. Um, actually, for the most part, most of the fixtures are like big team versus smaller team. So not a yeah. lot of things stand up. <laughs> almost, almost like it's rigged, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Barca versus um, Real Sociedad on match day two is also interesting. And match day three, let me see. Valencia versus Atleti. I guess you could say that's pretty interesting, but for the month of August, nothing. Yeah, Gattuso. We can see how Gattuso gets acquainted to life in Spain. Uh, Yeah. So, I mean, for Valencia, I feel they have their first two fixtures. One is winnable, the other one is obviously a San Mames, so it's difficult. And then Atleti, so. We'll see how well they can start. Yeah, and I'll say from from my perspective, from an eye catching, an eye catching trend is Real Madrid play the first three games away from home. Hmm. And yeah, that that seems to be happening for the last two seasons. Yeah, I think it has to do with the fact that they're going to they're building a lot of the stadiums, so yeah. they're building a lot of the runabouts. So maybe they're waiting a bit for that. And yeah, I, I um, think that was and. and I just feel just to put a on that. I feel how they do in the first three games could set the standard probably throughout the rest of the season. Because having yeah. three away games back to back is very difficult. And especially mm-hmm. when you're just starting the season. And I feel last season what really helped them is they got I believe they got seven points out of their first Yeah, yeah, they got seven points, points out of the first three. And those were all three away games. And that yeah. puts you in this stage of momentum. And also looking at these fixtures, I don't know, with Barca again, they they have really tough games in the first four games, and that's what's affected them in the previous seasons. Yeah. Same yeah, with but, Atleti, they have like really tough mm-hmm. games too. Yeah. And it's very crucial for Barcelona that we don't play catch up again this season. Because yeah. I think even if we don't significantly strengthen, as long as we don't lose a lot of like to make good players, we still have enough at least to get to January and maybe be close, have a title race of sorts at least. And I expect us to like certainly overcome Real Madrid because our shortcomings, especially against teams like Rayo, it's going to take <laughs> it's going to take an intense summer of drilling to fix those. Because how can you? I'm still salty. Like, how can you get <laughs> one point from Rayo and Cadiz in a whole season? Like, Real Madrid <laughs> eats those points for breakfast. Yeah. But the, the, the thing with Barcelona is in their first five pictures, they have Rayo in the first game. They have yeah. Rosa Sedat away, Valladolid, Sevilla away, and Cadiz away. So, it, you know, it's, to it's quite honest, tough. Is the three is the three games against the quote unquote bottom half teams that worry me <laughs> against Mr. and Savi? I'm actually pretty confident because you know they'll come on to us and yeah, against bottom half teams we just forget how to play football. Yeah, and do you think Robert Lewandowski makes a difference if he comes to Barcelona? And he makes a difference because he improves on some things that Oba lacks. But Oba's overall play, like his like hold up play, isn't that good. Sometimes his first touch puts Busquets and Frankie Young in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Landowski at least can, if he can come in, if we can get that done, he can come in 
load the ball up. He's obviously better than Aubameyang at scoring goals. So, yeah, hopefully we can create more consistently. And he, obviously, being who he is, if he can hit the ground running, that would be massive. But if we don't get him, I still believe Uber can do a job. I think Uber has at least 17 goals a season in him. But isn't there over, over booking in the four areas for Barcelona if Lewandowski does? Yeah, true. Because yeah, exactly. you have Ferran That's... Torres, Dembele, Ansu Fati, Aubameyang, yeah. Depay, who we've all, yeah. we've all forgotten to still plays for Barcelona. Yeah. yeah. And, but here's the thing, right? Dembele is probably not going to stay. So we could easily push Ferran Torres. Basically, has no competition on the right hand side because every other forward. Is either in number nine or is left sided. Yeah. So I can I, I don't think it's overbooking as such yet, but look the young is going to go, Adam Atari is going to go. We could just you know promote give up the game time, see how he does. So for now, providing like the teams I providing the teams I said happen, then I don't think we'll be overbooked. Because in his position, yeah. I believe his goal is much better than the pie. What can he get? Maybe not as good as Lewandowski, but I will worry about that. Lewandowski is so about that. Come again. Like, I'll worry about that Lewandowski. As a party because that affects how I can progress. Mm. Yeah, they, they, they could play together, to be honest. I could see like Fatty on the left, Lewandowski in the middle, Fern on the right, or. But where do you play Obama yet? I also, I also think that if Fatty is going to make the first team rule his own, it's not going to be this year because he still has to get back to his old self. It's not going to be as soon as a lot of people expect. So I believe that honestly, not just with Fatih, with Pedri and Gavi, we should protect them and not have them play every five minutes. Well, Barcelona's transfer strategy some of, sort of feels like football fans here at Football Masters. Because on one hand, we hear that Barcelona don't have the money. Then all of a sudden, they look like Lewandowski, we discussed. They look to Bernard Silva, they look to Tristan Bay, they look to Cassier, they look to Asli Cuerta, Marcus Alonso, Christian Sin. You get the mix. Seems like it's going to be a brand new team at Barcelona, but what do you work? Yeah, I don't know. A lot of the targets we've been linked with so far, actually, are kind of underwhelming, in my opinion. Because besides, well, and those can catch you. The rest of them, I'm like, are they really improving what we have right now? Because I'm like, why are we? Why is Marcos Alonso and Aspilicueta being linked to us when we have two right backs already? Not counting Daniel Alves, he's already left hand. You know, Marcos Alonso is like better in a back three as against a back four. So, some of these don't really make that much sense. And then Christensen. Christensen could be good, but then he's not, as he is now, he's not better than Piqué and Araujo, and I don't think he's that much better than Eric. Come on. As long as he's Eric, better than... Eric, 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 is, bro, Eric is pretty bad. Man. Yeah. Eric, <laughs> Eric, I, he's young, so I give him that allowance that he's young. You know, he'll yeah. grow. I don't, think he's, he's, I don't think he's that much better than that. Mm. I mean, there's a reason why Pep and Luis Eric are obsessed with him, so I'm hoping I see the win this season. <laughs> yeah, we, we've all been hoping for that, but <laughs> we haven't seen it. Uh, let's move on to Real Madrid. Uh, they're the ones who have actually made the high-profile sign-in, sign-ins <laughs> in La Liga. Maybe not Kylian Mbappe, but they got Chouameni, who was like a I don't know, constellation price when I get Mbappe. <laughs> I, I must confess, I haven't seen this guy play that. Yeah. I've only seen him play twice. 
one was in the Nations League against Spain and one was for Monaco in that crazy game against Lyon two years ago. Or was it last year? Yeah, so I only seen it twice. I mean, people that have watched me a lot say he's really good, but I don't think he's better than what they have there in Casemiro. So I feel like this one is a good investment for the future. And if also competition and relief for Casemiro too. Because they lacked a proper backup DM for sure for ages. Hmm? I think before the Kovacic was the only backup that he had for the since yeah, he made that is, in his own. Yeah, Kovacic prefers to play in like a modish kind of position, if you ask yeah. him. Yeah. And also they signed Rudiger. So is that the end for Mendy or for Alba? <laughs> I I think it's more likely it's Mendy. But here's the thing. It's just because Mendy has been so good. Even though he wasn't as good as he was in previous seasons, this season, he was still very effective. So it's interesting to see how they're going to do it. Some people would say Carvalho should be binned and play him with a right? But I don't think that's a good idea. So, yeah. Or you can play, you can play three at that. Yeah, you can play at the back, but Ancelotti hasn't done that before, to my knowledge. Yeah, I don't think that. But, but it would be, I do see Triad the back working for them because let's face it, Real Madrid's right wing position is free for all, like a defensive mid, a midfielder can claim it at this point. So we can see <laughs> a five three two where it just bends and Vinny up top, KCM. Chris Madrid, Casemiro in the middle, and then the aforementioned five defenders. That could be pretty good, honestly. Yeah, especially exactly when, would. Yeah, and but, but what a, oh sorry. Uh, sorry. And instead of Cruz, sometimes if you want like extra push from midfield to make up for the lack of numbers up top, you can play Valverde. Yeah, that, that is true. And I guess the introduction of uh, Tremaine with Kamavinga is going to give Romero's midfield a bit more energy, a bit more youth, which they sort of lacked in the Champions League. And every time Kamavinga came on, especially when he came on with Valverde, they looked a much more energetic. Yeah, yeah. true. Because in the Champions League, it's not about being the best team or the best structured team. Sometimes it's about you can survive in the chaos of knockout football. So having more energy is a real bonus in such a situation. Yeah. If you're Barcelona, if you're FFC, and you're thinking of how I might get to the it's pretty hard to tell. I'll, I'll guess the only thing, the only weakness I see from Real Madrid is that right side of attack hasn't really been dealt with mm. yet. And it does seem like Asensio is going to be so... Who knows if Rodrigo doesn't explode the same way Vinicius did this last season? Yeah, it might be a weakness for that. Yeah, but on the other hand, I feel like Barcelona, Atleti, and anyone else should worry more about what they can improve because Real Madrid got about eighty-six points last season, right? Yeah, Barcelona and Atleti on their own can do more to get ten extra points if they just fix some silly things they do and then if you can get that 10 extra points that gets you above it then you just see what you just hope that Real Madrid slip up but I feel like yeah, yeah the case is more like they have to improve on themselves first round and worrying about what Real Madrid are doing yeah that is true and both of them they really suffer against that seems that you consider lower ranked teams, teams that should be mm -hmm. struggling for relegation. I think Atleti lost about 15 or something points to the Yeah. Which, if you add that to the current tally, they would be right up there around it. So, yeah, like, you're right. But they do have issues at Atleti because the Salco is going to go. to be already mm -hmm. left. Marcus Llorente, I don't think he scored a goal last season in La Liga. Versus yeah, the season Lurie. when Atleti won the league, where he had 26 goal involved. So, him playing further back is an option throughout this last season. I might say you're confusing last season with <laughs> last season, this season. I'm not sure what to say. Yeah. And 
Yeah, let's see. Also, need the, not another striker because Suarez has left. I mean, Suarez has already been phased out, but right now, Atleti have the problem where they have so many players that just have a good two months and dip. So they need someone who will consistently get the goals like Suarez did in 2021. Can that be John Felix in next season, this season? I mean, if John Felix can become a, dub, a high double-digit goal scorer, that would be fantastic for Atleti. But, you know, it's, it's not... I, I, it's not something that is very realistic if you really look at it in the cold light of day. I feel the yeah. person most likely to do it is um, Korea or Konya, if Konya is starting more games. I'm going to push on that because I was actually looking at the stats the other day and he had, I believe, a goal involvement every 105 minutes. Last mm-hmm. season, like he was, he missed a lot of games. I believe he missed 12. He suffered injury through some of those games. So, and he played only 26 games, but he scored eight goals and four assists. But I'll say his issue, right, mm-hmm. is that the last two seasons, is that two months where he's been out of this world? Yeah. And the other, the other period, he's either been inconsistent or injured. Mm-hmm. This season, right before the Champions League game against uh, City, he was out of, I believe, it was best in La Liga at that in that seven eight game stretch. We scored in almost every game. We ensured Atleti were close, were in the top four. He did very well against Manchester United in both games, but after the, after those games, it sort of went up the boil. So I do yeah. think there's a player there who can get the same level of stats that Vinicius got this season. Sure. But it's up to him to make himself available consistently like Vinicius does. Because one thing you could never say about Vinny before his glow up was that he was missing through injury. He was always making sure he was available so that when the coach picks him, you know, he can try and get himself into a team. And he's finally done that. So Felix has to work on making himself available, whether it's like changing a habit or something, or Atleti just getting better doctors because they seem to have a bad injury crisis over there sometimes. For Fortega. <laughs> and I'll also say Felix needs to work on his physical side because he's made like a two-eight substance. And mm-hmm. it's just easy to push up the ball. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, we can transition to Sevilla, but I'm not really sure what the team's going to look like. So maybe we'll talk about them eventually um, when March we talk about them a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It feels like Del Carlos has left. If Kunde yeah. leaves, they're going to need another centre back pairing. And with the money that they'll get from two of them, they could actually use it to really revamp the whole team. Yeah. I feel like the problem for them though is getting rid of some players because some of these players may be on wages that some other teams that may be interested can't afford and such. Yeah, Munir, De Jong. I also see they want to sell NSRI. West Ham is interested. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, there's the cash on him at this point. Yeah, because he hasn't... I, I do think he's a very good striker, but he has... He has some issues where he's too light, like he's too clumsy on the ball. I mean, mm-hmm. especially this season, it's just been he's not had a great season, to be honest. Yeah. And so maybe it doesn't the right time to him. It's not when his value no. is still pretty good. Yeah, and I do think Rafa Mir is the better striker than I do mm-hmm. think so because he has more of a well-rounded game. He's good in the air, and he's that sort of selfish striker that I like. Who suits at first sight. So I, mm-hmm. I, I do think he has he has a bigger ceiling than NSC has. Sure, yeah. He doesn't have the blistering pace, but I do think his overall game is better. I don't think he's actually quicker than he looks, to be honest. Well, right from there. Yeah, he against West Ham, like there was a there was a last as soon as he came on, he just like went on one a run, and I was like, well, he's quicker than I thought he was. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's very quick. He's his shots are good. So maybe if he's the main number nine next season, we see more things from him. Because yeah, that was the issue that gets hurt. I don't really think he's right to be the main number nine yet because when NS so when Rafa Mir is not on his game, he looks like in the words of a Sevilla fan, a flower vase. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. true. But also he made a trans- made a big transition from playing. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, big transition. Yeah. For a team that's always fighting relegation to go to Sevilla who or some people might see him to be the team that fights for the league. Some people might see him as a team that fights for just the league position. But that's a mm-hmm. huge transition. And his stats, and, and I know the thing with stats, like you can also compare errors. Like his stats are better than, better than Kanute and to be on a big trade to the year. So mm-hmm. you never know. Still, still a youngish guy. So I do mm-hmm. think maybe they give him the season to test himself, to yeah. see if, if he can do well. Yeah. And like you said, the seal, I believe Runda and Nestri may be better right now than Rafa Mirsi is higher. But the big news today is the elections at Athletic Club. Mm-hmm. John Iruwate, if I pronounce his name right, as is the new Athletic President. And the significance of this is that Ernesto Valverde is coming back to start the ball. Are you yeah. excited about this, Oscar? Yeah, I'm happy to see Annie back after Bartomeu, quite frankly, did him dirty. Yeah. <laughs> and did our season dirty because why would you sack a coach that was first in the league just because of this Super Cup? That, yeah. you know, and the weird thing is, it's like you are just looking for season. any excuse to sack him. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, back on Ernesto, he's. He's a pretty good coach, honestly. And I believe he'll do well, pretty well for Athletic Club because they have some good players that are coming through, some very nice homegrown players that have been better than the ones in the last two or three years. So hopefully for them. And also, also this new president wants to sign, I believe he's the one that wants to sign Moncayola, right? Oh, oh, no, no, it's not the one. There's the other one. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I believe Ernesto would do well for them and, you know, try and get them closer to a Europa League or Conference League spot. Yeah, but to, to be fair, they were very close to Europa League spot this season. Yeah, they were close, but that was... I believe if Villarreal got their act together, they would have, you know, they would have wrapped up the Calvin Challenge for top four. And yeah, those said that were pretty ahead of athletics, so there's still room to grow. So, for athletic, one, one thing that Bob really was criticized for those at Barcelona was the fact that some Barcelona fans thought his playing style was dour. I don't necessarily share that view. I think Barcelona has a great attention to the rest of Bob Brady, maybe it was a quote or tiki taki. As mm-hmm. it's going to come in, like, spell it. But taking over from Barcelona Athletic, Athletic, they played he's going to make a difference in that playing style because he's better to that four. And they just seemed limited at times. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, dear. I believe Ernesto's playing style is more expansive and easier on the eye than Marcelino. It's not Marcelino is a T word by any means, but yeah. Um Valverde would improve them there. You know, maybe he could work one does with someone like Sunset and get him to be the guy that can get athletic into a double digit striker. Because you know we've given up on Naki Williams ever doing that. <laughs> May never know. Maybe it could work on it in the Williams. So when Iniaki was looking through, and I believe he had his best season ever in the Yes, that's true. That's true. That's true. The last time he hit double digits, I believe Ernie was the coach or for at least one or two of those seasons. And I just feel he won this event for the weird because if they had 
a reliable number nine because they do create chances, even under Marcelino. The playing style mm-hmm. wasn't the best in my opinion, but they did create lots of chances, a lot of games. Mm-hmm. But they just could never finish. And mm-hmm. that's something athletically they need a reliable number nine. And it's not so easy because of the limitations, as we all know. Yeah. Because it has to be a best player or, you know, someone with links to the best country. Yeah, like Antoine Griezmann. <laughs> yeah, I believe the guy who wanted, Be- I, I believe if Bielsa was to come, Bielsa said he wanted Griezmann or something. I was like, yeah, Griezmann would definitely want a piece of real sister that fans by going to <laughs> Oh, man. He, if he does that, he'll be the most hated player in the history of basketball. Yeah. <laughs> he's about like three or four fan bases. Yeah. I can't, exactly. Yeah, I think all, all three fan bases has been actually, yeah, in three fan bases, he'll be very hated. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't think Barcelona fans like him that much. Neither do Atleti fan. They still like, they still hate him for the way he moves. I don't think Ross is that fine. clearly like him at the moment, but yeah. <laughs> He'll be, I think it'll be worse than he might not get the good treatment, but like that will be pretty something if he's going to that. That's a point. My, I'm like, how they handle these stupidly high wages. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, his, his announcement video would be insane. I'll pay to watch that. Come again. His announcement video will be insane. I'll pay to watch that. Yeah, exactly. I paid to watch it. Speak of announcement videos. There's a really nice announcement video today for a particular transfer. Oh, which one? Is uh, and Marlis to Villarreal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That got announced today. Like that's that's a sick signing, you know. Yeah, that's good. I'm really excited for that signing. It's good to have a commandante back in La Liga. And also I found out that Villarreal will be playing a good chunk of their home games at the Seattle de Valencia. So Morales, insane, Morales will be far from home. <laughs> yeah, but I, I feel Levante, they sort of did him dirty with the way what the president said about him. He didn't have a proper press conference. So he sort of went through the back door. And this is a guy who's exactly. it feels done like, for the club. Mm-hmm. I don't even think the club has posted anything official about him leaving as far as I, from the last time I checked. Yeah. All he but just you know did what? announced he's leaving and then that's it. Honestly, I don't blame him for making this move because he's obviously in his mid thirties. This is his best chance to play for a club that fights in Europe, a club that could be in Champions League or could be in Europa League. And mm-hmm. from what we've all seen from Morales over the past, five seasons I genuinely think he's a player who's a level where he can play in the Champions League I think I think he can play for public Atletico to be honest that's not me being an error yeah it's not it's not too crazy to think he fits in the European level team so yeah it's really nice to see and this further strengthens Villarreal's position as conference league favourites yeah onto- <laughs> yeah or top four favorites, to be honest. Yeah. And yeah, I guess you could say that. Uh, I don't really know yet. We'll have to see at the end of the window. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll do a podcast. Yeah. So we, uh, we'll do a podcast before the season begins yeah. and we'll see. Yeah. I'd say they are close, they are getting close to probably overtaking Sevilla if Sevilla don't reinvest the funds wisely. Yeah, the summer is actually yeah. pretty much together. It's pressure. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that's all we have to talk about today. We, we did yeah. the Sanguna playoffs, some La Liga fixtures. We spoke about the big three, four, five, six clubs in Spain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, we oh better, yeah, it's better. They've not really done anything to be honest. Uh, so. yeah. Like they haven't it's done much. Big but... We can probably talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I feel a lot of the transfer activities for the Liga clubs will be done after after June 30th. Because mm-hmm. that's when the financial 
thing closes and they all know what they can stand after that. Yeah. And I do think Lali gets famous for deals done very late. Sure, sure, sure. I wouldn't be surprised if this upstage of deals closer to September 1st and all the predictions we make go out of the window. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm probably going to hold off my season predictions until after the draft. Yeah. <laughs> sure, like I can I imagine on August 30th. I foolishly thought, for that yeah. Well. yeah, I foolishly thought that Griezmann would fire us to a league title now that he doesn't have to hide behind Messi's shadow, but then he left <laughs> to add to the yeah. validate my expectations radically. So yeah, I guess it's best to wait until when the window is shut and also gauging how everyone started in their first three games. Yeah. yeah. yeah and it's it's also in the middle of the World Cup season, you know, so you mm-hmm. can't really it's hard it's a very hard season to predict because if a team doesn't have as many international players, yeah that's going to be, be in, in a stronger position by the time the World Cup ends. Yeah. But then at, at the same time I feel like since it's just the World Cup is in the middle of the season, you can just go home from the final and maybe just take at least a week off and continue. Yeah. Since everyone, yeah, the only thing I, I you could actually say you'd worry for the teams with not many internationals because they won't be as much sharp as some other players. So, but I, I do think the league is fighting on the in the US and all during. This period where they play the World Cup. Mm-hmm. So that starkness might not be as much of And it also gives the coaches of like, it can be a team like, let's say, they might not have too many players in the World Cup. And if they make some mistakes in the first, let's say 15 games, of, they have that form as a second line in the sense. True, true, true. Yeah, it could work in their way. Yeah, it could work. No. Yeah, we just have to see. Like you said, it's going to be hard to predict this season with all of the nonsense around. Yeah. Sure. But we to work up now in Qatar with 45 degree weather. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be suicide. Yeah, it will be. Well, on that happy and this podcast. Thanks again, Austin, for coming in. We Thank you for having me. We found something, right? Yeah.